Greetings from Wyoming. OS Y Guy here, and this is my review of Pop OS 20.04. I've been using Linux for maybe about eight years, and I've used various distributions over that time, and I've narrowed down my distribution of choice to Pop OS. I was running Pop OS 19.10 very successfully, very smoothly, just a great operating system. And so what causes me to pull the trigger and move into 20.04? Here are the signs of a well-designed operating system. Fast installation. When I install Pop OS 20.04 and I update that installation, I'm done inside of 10 minutes. That to me represents a well-designed and well-configured operating system. Now, in its daily use, 20.04 is fast, reliable, stable, fully functional. It runs all the programs and services that I expect to be able to run flawlessly. I, I have two DigitalOcean servers. One is a NextCloud server and the other is Simple Help, which is a remote desktop app. And I expect to be able to connect up to those services without a flaw, and that certainly is the case in 20.04. I also look for a well-configured desktop environment. I would say that Pop! OS has the best configured GNOME desktop environment out there. It also has useful and memorable keyboard shortcuts, which I really like. When you have a keyboard-centric design to, to the desktop interface, to me that represents more efficiency, more productivity. The less I have to move between keyboard and mouse, the better. Pop! OS also has extensive access to software repositories. And so with all those things in mind, let me, let's just take a look at some statistics here. Pop! OS 20.04 is designated as long-term support. That means that it is uh, a usable operating system for five years without having to upgrade it, so that's a, a wonderful characteristic. Also, it's based on Ubuntu, which means that, that Pop! OS has full access to Ubuntu repositories. And it is developed and maintained by Linux hardware company System76. Now, I'm located in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and System76 is in Denver, Colorado, which is 100 miles south. In Wyoming terms, that's a next-door neighbor and um, uh, I really like the idea that they are a close-by company. I use them for my hardware. Now, I'm not being compensated uh, uh, by System76. They're not a sponsor. All the good things I have to say about Pop! OS and about my, my System76 hardware are completely unsolicited. It's just good stuff. So I use a Darter Pro for my laptop presently, and uh, a Meerkat that's two years old is what I'm using to capture this video. Here's a uh, my five-year-old Meerkat. I have Windows 10 installed on it, and boy, does it it performs very well. Pop OS uses a well-configured GNOME desktop environment. The environment is described as having a minimal amount of clutter. Let's take a look at an empty workspace. This is what GNOME looks like in Pop OS. Very clean, no clutter. No Ubuntu dock running on the side. The only evidence that GNOME is running is the panel across the top. If you are an unfamiliar GNOME user, then I would want you to know this much. There are two views, Normal View and Activities Overview. You can toggle between these two views either with a mouse click or a keyboard press. So if I move my mouse to the top left corner and click Activities, GNOME toggles from normal view into activities overview. If I instead use the keyboard equivalent, the super key, that accomplishes the same thing. Every time we move into activities, you will see that there is a favorite applications dock running on the left side. And if I want to show you the rest of the applications installed on the computer, I click on show applications. Here is the, the first screenful of the applications I've installed, and here's the second screenful. Now, I want to share one particular thing that I always do with this dock of favorite applications on the side. All of these 
applications are click and draggable. In other words, you can position these applications anywhere on the dock that you want to. I am using a built-in GNOME shortcut here. This is not going to be a, a, a Pop! OS shortcut, but a GNOME shortcut that is based on the position of these programs on the dock. So the program that is in the first position is accessible with Super 1. The second position is accessible with Super 2. The third position, Super 3, and so on. So I can access those programs without having to be in Activities Overview with that keyboard shortcut. So if I press and hold Super and then press 2 and 3, I then open up the, the applications that were in the second and third positions. I would like to focus in on three new features in Pop! OS 2004. They have new built-in support for flat packs. They do have some new keyboard shortcuts and also some reassigned keyboard shortcuts. And they have also introduced a window tiling manager. First of all, changes in Pop Shop. Pop Shop is the software center for Pop! OS and of course it continues to feature the Ubuntu and Pop! OS repositories but there is a new repository from flathub.org that's a Flatpak repository. So I'm going to have you take a look at Pop Shop. This is the Pop Shop um, software center and I'm going to have you take a look at Spotify. So as I click Spotify here, I'll have you take note that we have two versions of Spotify. There is the Deb version and the Flatpak version. So you can choose which one of those two you'd like to use to install into uh, your version of Pop! OS. Now, the, the older repository, so to speak, uh, the Ubuntu and Pop! OS repositories, they've been around for a long time. And then the newer Flatpak repository, there's some good things and bad things about that. Flatpaks, in some cases, they are introducing software that was not previously available. In other cases, they provide a flat pack that is a newer version. And so uh, in the case of Bitwarden, this is, this is my favorite password manager. This was not available at all in 19.10 from PopShop, but it is now available in 2004 as a flat pack, so I installed it that way. I'm also uh, a user of MuseScore. It's a terrific uh, music editing software package and it is available both as a deb and as a flat pack. The deb version was older, it was 3.2 and the flat pack was 3.4, so I opted for the flat pack version. I originally installed my Nextcloud Sync client as a flat pack and I discovered that it was not as complete an installation. It did not automatically install as um, a startup program. So that meant that as I turned my, my computer on, I would not automatically synchronize into Nextcloud uh, without doing some extra tweaking. So I decided to uh, uninstall that and I am using the dev version of Nextcloud. It does go in automatically as a startup application. And it also shows up, up uh, here at the top with an app indicator where I can access some uh, further configurations of my next cloud. KDEN Live was both a dev version and um, um, a flat pack version and I opted for the flat pack version. And Zoom was only available as a flat pack and so it was nice to have that option as well. One of the good features about Pop! OS is its implementation of keyboard shortcuts. They are very nicely designed in my opinion. They do uh, have a common denominator of using the super key for almost all of the shortcuts, which I think makes them more memorable and more useful. If you have used the, the Pop! OS keyboard shortcuts like I have, then you'll want to be aware of some of the changes that they've made to those shortcuts as well. Because they've added in the tiling manager, they have had to reassign some keyboard shortcuts. And so as a consequence, there are some differences. But let's just take a look at the documentation that they have for keyboard shortcuts. If we go to the, the pop.system76.com website and just go down to the bottom of the screen and look for pop docs, 
Uh, if we scroll up just a little bit, there's a section for Pop! OS keyboard shortcuts. And this is their documentation of all the different shortcuts that they have in place. Um, I don't even think I use even a quarter of these shortcuts. But um, the ones that, that I do use are, I find, very memorable. And, and uh, so I zero on, in on the ones that will make the most sense, as I think you should do as well. Um, uh, but uh, just as an example, uh, moving from one workspace up or down used to be just simply the super key and down arrow or up arrow. And that's no longer the case. They had to reassign that keyboard shortcut because of the window tiling manager. And so uh, it's now super control up and down arrow. So if I hope, hold down super and control and then press down arrow, down arrow, then I move around like that. The close window shortcut. Now I think this it should have been super Q from the beginning. They did have it as super W in previous Pop! OS. Um, but, you know, Command Q is the long-standing quit, uh, quit using a window command in Mac OS. And I thought that they should just stick with Super Q. It took them a while, but they decided to make it uh, official here. So Super Q is the, the official way to close out of a window. And Super M is the new shortcut for maximizing. So if I focus on my window here on, on the right side, if I press Super M, then that will toggle toggle to uh, fully maximized, and and Super M will toggle back to smaller view. And uh, if I focus on my my webcam window and press Super M, then that makes it full size, and Super M makes it back to to uh, uh, the the normalized view. So they have made some keyboard changes like that. If you have been using the keyboard shortcuts in the past, then you'll need to be aware that they've had to make some changes. Now it's time to talk about Pop Shell. This is a new tiling windows manager that has been added into Pop! OS. Uh, the, the Pop! OS team has made it into a GNOME extension, and that extension shows up at the top here with this icon. And as I click on that icon, you can see that the Tile Windows extension is turned on at this moment. It can be toggled on and off, and you can choose to run it and then turn it off and then turn it back on again. That kind of action is it, it works just fine. And I must confess that that's exactly what I end up doing in some cases. It's been a, a bit of a learning curve to learn how to use the Tiling Manager, but I found myself being pretty productive with it. It works really well in some instances, and then in other instances, sometimes it just kind of gets in the way and becomes more cumbersome than helpful. So I do switch back and forth and just use it when it's appropriate and turn it off when I don't need it. With that in mind, I would like to, before I actually demonstrate pop shell, I would like to talk about a particular problem that I've identified. I would call it the you can't reopen a closed program problem. Here's the scenario. You have turned on the pop shell extension, so it's running. You open up a program, you close the program, and that closed program still behaves as if it is open. So you can't re-click that icon and open it back up again because the, the Pop Shell Tiling Manager is making a mistake. Let me explain it a little bit better by going into Activities. I have a particular problem with this tiling extension. This program called GVC View, that's the one that runs my, my webcam. If I open this program and the Tiling Manager is on, and then I decide to close GVC View. If I come back into Activities, I will still see the, the white active dot at the bottom of that as if it were still open, even though it has been closed. So basically, the Tiling Manager is being fooled into thinking that it's still open when it's not. And the only workaround that I have for that is to right-click on the icon 
If I want to run it again, I have to select New Window. That is the shortcoming of, of the Tiling Manager that I have identified for myself. Now, this doesn't just happen with GUVC View. It also happens, as an example, to VirtualBox. If I open up VirtualBox and run a virtual machine and then decide I'm done now, so I shut it down, and then later on I say I need to open that back up again, it will still have the active dot on VirtualBox even though it has been closed. So again, it's just a tiling extension error, and I hope that they, they address that sometime and get that fixed. So that's a small aggravation that I just want you to be aware of. Okay, now let's talk about the actual use of Pop Shell. So I'll go to a new window and I'll open up the activities view. Let's just open up Firefox. When you open up any program, it will become maximized automatically when the tiling manager is on. So I'll go to pop.system76.com and uh, uh, looking at some of the, the things that they have said about the new Pop! OS 2004. Uh, I'd like to take a look at Pop! Docs, and so I'm going to right-click on this and then select Open in a New Window. Automatically, we retile, so whatever was in the original window goes to the left-tiled window, and the new window goes to the right. This is completely adjustable, so you can, uh, after you have the two windows open, you can certainly click and drag one window, and then the the other window will synchronize and match up to, to that change in border. So now I actually use Nextcloud, and I use text documents in my Nextcloud, and so I'm just going to go ahead and open up my web notes here. Uh, let's say that I'm looking at the, the notes that they talk about here with firmware management. So I'll just click and drag across there and use the copy command and then paste it over here. So just doing some quick notes. Now, likely I will need to have a, a larger window on the left side than on the right side in this case, since my notepad here is, is uh, not needing to have a lot of space. So I'll, I'll pull it over a little bit farther, like about like that. Now, I think I would like to open up the keyboard shortcuts for Pop Shell. So I'm going to click on the Pop Shell icon and then select View All, and that'll open up the shortcuts. Now, I was thinking that the shortcuts were going to show up at the bottom so that it would be an up, up and down tile instead of a left and right tile. And so I'm going to actually make a change here by just using a keyboard shortcut that they have in for Pop Shell. It is Super O, which is the orientation changing shortcut. So they have it right here. So Super O change window orientation is, is what happens in that case. Now I can click and drag and uh, make the, the, uh, the windows larger or smaller, both uh, uh, grabbing the up and down arrow spot, and I can also change um, the, the left and right orientation as well. So uh, those things are, are easily changeable. Now I can also decide, there are keyboard shortcuts to move the, the, the keyboard shortcuts window up to the top, but I'm just going to do it visually. I'm going to click and drag the, the title bar and bring it up to the top, and you, you see what happens there. My, my notes drop down to the bottom just automatically. I think I'll actually like to have the notes on the top anyway, so I'll just click and drag it back up, and I will reselect my, my Pop Shell keyboard shortcuts window because I'm going to open up another, uh, another program. Let's open up Calculator. And since I selected the shortcut uh, window, then we got a tile that happened within that environment. And of course, this is changeable, so I can click and drag and drop it off over here, or I can uh, put it up here and, and uh, change the orientation that way. But I can also make this into a tiled, or uh, an untiled window. And they have that identified here. Super G uh, will toggle floating mode, uh, is what that does. So 
if I press Super G, now I can just move this around and have it as a floating window instead of as a constantly tiled window. Okay, uh, I'm done with the calculator. I'm going to focus my cursor on the left window over here, and I'm going to open up another program. So let's open up Pop Shop. So I'll press Super O, and then we get the, the change that way. So uh, now the, the Pop Shop ended up on the top, and my Firefox is on the bottom. Um, instead of clicking and dragging, I'm going to go ahead and use the keyboard shortcut here. So if I press Super Enter, you will, you will note that the, the bottom window just got highlighted. And now I can just use my arrow keys. So if I press my up arrow key, then I exchange places that easily uh, and, and uh, move the, uh, the Firefox window up to the top. And I'll press Enter. And then we're done with that. And of course, now I can I can change the border, and this um, horizontal border does not have to synchronize up to the horizontal border on on the other window. So just wanted you to see that as well. So that's my quick uh, demo of how the pop shell works. And now I'm going to press Super Q Q Q Q and close all those windows. That's how PopShell works. And that's my review of PopOS 20.04. I hope you got lots of good information. Thanks for watching.